This is Lee Forrester, SCS Honcho. This is the first installment of a replay or the begin of the beginning of a campaign game of Day of Days between myself as the Germans and Jim Pyle, my arch nemesis and main playtester for Day of Days as the Allies. I'm going to do this clicking through the Vassal replay files and want to ask for your patience right away from the beginning for all the clicking. I'm going to try to reduce it by moving the mouse far away from the microphone, but there's going to be an awful lot of clicking. Hopefully you'll be able to bear with that. I simply don't have the time to record this twice and remove the clicking by doing a video and this voiceover over that, yada, yada, yada. Just not going to happen. I think it's more important that you guys get a sense for how the game works, and uh, then you can make a purchase decision or start planning your own campaign games of this huge SES monster that I've had a great time working with. All right, you see here the main map. We're going to do the airdrops right now. This is the beginning of the campaign game, so the first thing is to drop the airborne, and we'll be doing that over here, or Jim will be doing that here in the Utah area. So I'm going to zoom in a couple levels so you can see what's going on. The screen will be jerking around a little bit. Again, uh, it's just, just the way it goes right now. You can see the piles ready to drop. And I will begin doing the replay right now for the air landings, just sort of clicking through it and then commenting it uh, as I get a chance. So with the airdrops, you roll uh, for each unit to see if it lands, if, it's, if it loses a step for the time being, or if it's delayed. So what will happen, as you see here, with that first stack of about nine, about half of them aren't even here yet. Those have been strewn so far throughout the countryside that it's going to take them a day probably to reassemble and then they'll appear at one of the drop, drop zone markers. So uh, even though it looks like a stack of units quite substantial, you can see already these have all been flipped. So half, their, half of the strength points are going to be gone. Most of those will return, but not for a while. So and then you roll randomly, much as you do uh, for those of you who played It Never Snows in terms of where it lands. So as me for the Germans, it's a little unfortunate. I would have rather they'd been out there. I don't want them quite this far forward. I would have rather they dropped over there to give me a better chance to defend these bridges. So I'm, I'm not liking this already, to be honest. But what's to like as the Germans? Damage control for the whole game. Uh, okay, unfortunately, he's already dropped or captured that bridge. Not good. We keep clicking through. Uh, with the forces a little bit further to the east. Oh, I don't like this. He's dropped adjacent to one of my artillery units. And our artillery units cannot barrage uh, any other counter if there's one adjacent to them. So this has already pinned this artillery unit down. He won't be able to uh, bombard the beach. Grr, as they say. And we keep going. Uh, let's see how it's ended up here. Well, that's not too bad. The nice thing about this for me as the German is that uh, with the artillery there, maybe I'll go for it. I don't even remember what I did to try to take it out. Um, but it's, although probably we'll get a chance. But the other um, thing is I might be able to escape to the north with these units instead of having them simply eliminated. <clears throat> so we look down to the south. How's this going to go? All right. Yeah. Oh. You're kidding. Really? All the way over here? Uh, I, again, I would have rather he stuck around up there to give me a, a nice chance to get back here. So, All right, now it looks like we're over to the um, British, over to the Airborne. Let's see how these do. These will not take nearly as many losses, and they're not strewn all over the countryside like at Utah Landing, so they will land at full strength. And if they take a step loss by landing in the zone of control or landing on a target unit, then that's just uh, the way it is for them. So there's a few um, companies that have dropped out here. Often they're simply panzer bait. We'll see what he does. Poof, we're on to the next replay file. Sorry for the abrupt change of scenery. Uh, we are rolling now for bombers. What happens here is that after the airdrop, the Alma player gets to see if the strategic bombers do, or the, the sort of the pre, well, not strategic bombers, but the pre-invasion bombardment, uh, if it does anything. Now, because of the weather and because of missed targets, you roll for uh, each of the appropriate beach areas, uh, Utah, Omaha, or the Commonwealth, and you have a 50-50 chance of getting to do 10 airstrikes. So you may get a bunch, and you may not. Let's see how this one goes. So map one, 
did not get it. Map two, which is uh, Omaha, rolled a one through three. Jim did get it, so he's going to be dropping some there. He's happy about that. C through D, no. So I'm already a little fortunate of the three 50-50 chances. Only one came through, so I'm feeling good about that. These do a good job softening up the the Waffenesta, sort of the, the pillbox formations, etc. I also like bombing up artillery with those, trying to at least DG them and keep them out of the out of the way. So let's see how Jim's 10 airstrikes go here on Omaha. Oh yeah, he's also putting his, uh, he's using it in part of the, we've got the naval bombardment too, where all the naval units get to fire once, so he's placing his markers for the naval bombardment. So let's see, placing more, oh, now he's rolling for them. Uh, let me see if I can focus on the action a little bit here. All right, that was no effect. We're moving up here. Missed there, that's good. Now we're back over to Omaha. He's placing his initial bombardment and then he'll place his bombers too. And you can see here the sly old dog he is ganging up on the main access points. Now, this makes sense. It, bombardment is limited in this game. You can have at the most two airstrikes and three artillery type units in any one hack. So you can't dump 20 counters in one hacks. This stops some of that uh, create breakthrough by a blanket bombing technique that you can use in some other games. But still, he's being sly. Another way of doing this is, of course, tr just spreading them out, hoping that with good rolls, you can actually knock out more pillboxes this way because if you roll hot with five guys, you've wasted some of the rolls. But I think Jim is taking the approach that he really wants to clear these main access points. Here, let me remove the um, I'll hide units. You can see here that these are bluffs, cliff-type things, which vehicles can't go over. And here are the draws. Basically, there's not that. And so he's going to try to clear those out. Not like he's never played this game or anything before. Oops, let's get back to that. So, a bit more room. Let's see what happens here. Oh, don't like that. So he's softening him up, these guys. Now, that's not always a wise decision. It depends because um, this one formation, the, the I don't know, I don't speak French, Pointe du Hoc, does that sound right? Um, they might not even be there. That's one special one in this game. You have to roll to see if they're actually there. The planners thought they were. We know in reality they weren't. In this game, it's, it can go either way. Maybe they're there. Maybe they're not. All right. He removed a step in that artillery. Grr. I don't like that. That was a nice big artillery unit. Let's see. And, of course, it's... Hmm. I'm not sure what that was about. I think that was because you had to use the initial bombardment up there front. I, I can't remember exactly at this point. So he's rolling more. Let's see what happened here. He did eliminate a step of my Waffen nest. Oh, did he destroy the entire thing? Very unfortunate for the Germans. This is bad because, and he's probably going to be DG here in a second. Right. This was, uh, oh, lucky dog. So you really want these things to survive the initial bombardment because they can stop the attack for a long time. Now he could, this is gonna be very weak because it's half strength and he could punch through this in the first turn of the invasion. Ooh, I do not like that. That's not what I needed as a German player. I need him to roll poorly all the time. Naturally, that's not gonna happen, but I can wish. So here we are off to the Commonwealth front. Commonwealth Beach is placing, now there was no air bombardment. Uh, for this, so I'm very happy about that. But of course, there's an awful lot of naval units offshore there laying down some serious damage. Oh, he's doing more step hits on my um, my emplacements, on my fortifications. Ugh, 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 ugh. Sometimes they can really whiff, but that's not happening this time. All right, sorry about that. Let's come back now. Here we're off to sword. He's placing his units and doing the bombardment there. This, of course, is key because if you lose these in the initial bombardment, then all these, you can see this huge stacking units. They're going to be seriously overstacked, which means they're very vulnerable to artillery and they take extra losses. It's possible to really lose a lot of steps when you're stacked up this high. So as a commonwealth, you're just dreaming of eliminating either one or ideally both of these in the initial bombardment. Then you can advance up without really getting hammered too much by the artillery. 
So that's, it looks like I did sort of okay. I'm not eliminated, so he'll have to stop, but he's going to definitely eliminate both of those uh, emplacements <laughs> yeah, the first turn. Now, you can see here, beaches allow overstacking. There's huge stacks here. And this, of course, when you play with real counters, is a bit of a pain. Uh, I apologize for that. I tend to keep them off map a little bit. In um, Vassal, it doesn't matter at all. So they'll all get to attack, but they're going to really get, they're all pretty much going to be DG unless there's some really bad dice. All right, so we've done the bombardment. He's landing on the beaches now. What you do basically for each, it's in the first two waves, the, the first uh, turn or the first half day of the invasion of all three turns, three invasion waves. Here's wave one troops are landing. These are stacked up wave two and wave three. For waves one and wave two, you have to roll randomly for each unit to see which of, this, of the appropriate beachheads it lands in. Some of them, like on Mike Green, it just lands there. So there's not a big, huge deal. I didn't design in a lot of features for complicated scatter. It doesn't really matter. That's not important at the scale. For us, just get it done quickly, as quickly as possible is the most important thing. So he's spreading his guys out, making the rolls randomly. They're spread fairly evenly, as you'd assume, with the dice. So we move off here at gold. This one's fairly overstacked, so I'm certainly going to target that. Uh, this was done some weeks ago, so I don't even remember what I did, but we continue to watch as the overwhelming allied hordes land. So now we're off to Omaha. Uh, some of the features here are that the DD tanks have a 50 chance of surviving the landing. You just roll for those. There's some artillery that tries to land in the first waves, not the fir very first wave, but wave two and wave three. It almost always sinks because um, you have to roll for them and only a third of the steps will land. All right, so let's... Uh, see i think uh, i see you comment from jim historical so he probably lost two of his dd tank counters so i see one there there's two yep well three looks like he did okay you landed three of those eh, you know in the short term that's frustrating but in the long term of this game an extra armor counter is not gonna certainly not going to uh, make or break the game so now we're finishing off the landings we're over here at utah then um, you have to roll 50-50 uh, either way. Do you use the historical planned beaches or do you use the actual beaches according to Drift? As a German player, you want them to land historically because you've got a wall of stuff here to oppose them. He naturally, as my arch nemesis always does, roll to land down here. Uh, they, there is a rule that you can spot against these beaches from, um, I think, a... a, a WN from a fortification strong point within four, so they're not going to be totally immune to my artillery blast. But once they get off the beach, there's not going to be much damage. And historically, that was the case. Historically, they only lost, I guess, a couple of steps worth of stuff in the initial bombardment. Poof, we're on to allied movement on the first impulse turn. Now, if we look at the sequence of play again, pardon me if I've already done this with you. Uh, that we have the German Barrage, now it's the Allied Movement. Allied units can move one hex max during the first two waves. So this is sort of like a pre-turn set of two turns. Uh, then they'll be Barrage in combat. So Jim is moving right now. Let me focus in a little bit more. This is over, obviously, Utah. So his guys are moving off the beaches, one hex only. And now we're going to be over here at Omaha. And this is, yeah, so coming up. <clears throat> Restacking his guys a little bit. Let's um, load the next file as he continues his movement. That will be this one here. Now will be just a second to get this thing loaded. Okay, so here we go. You don't need to read all of our chit chat. Moving up, most of those guys are all DG, of course, because of the German barrages that I just did. I think we're off to the Commonwealth over here now, right? Yeah. So he's infiltrating in that one hex of movement, and as we see it sword, that's pretty normal. I'm not happy to see it as the Germans, but what can you do? And here you can see a little bit why it's important to eliminate these two things if you can during the barrage phase of turn one or the pre preliminary bombardment. 
because these guys could be moving off the beach totally and he could really be advancing much more quickly. And as it is, he's sort of hung up on the beach for yet another turn, although he should clear those out. It looks like we're on combat. He's declaring his combats now. Rolling D1R1, poof. And the next one, I think he got that too. So it could be worse. It's even worse if one of those is left with a bad die roll. Now, forgive me if I've mentioned this already, but if we look at the combat results table, this is very small. But at 5 to 1, there are still some chances of attacker losses. So when you're playing the, the allies in this game, you want to really husband your armor till you really need it. Because even your best strong armor units can take a loss picking off little units. So just like in the real battle, you don't want to throw your armor around all the time. You want to save it for when it counts. Now, of course, when you're hitting the beaches here, it doesn't matter. Everyone's just trying to to crawl off the beaches. So more combats. He's knocking me out. Not a big surprise. Ugh, took that hex. That's too bad. Let's see how we're doing in this other area. It's nice if the Germans can survive with at least one counter to slow him down a bit and do some more barrages on the second wave, but it looks like I'm not going to be that fortunate. No, he's cleared that whole area. That's too bad. Too bad for me, that is. Now, I was very nervous about this over here. Um, where is that? I think right there, right? He eliminated the uh, strong points. So there's a good chance he's going to knock me right out of that draw, which he did. Not good. Okay, so this is the end of the allied turn of turn one. So if we look again at the um, sequence of play, we went through the airdrops, plenary bombardment, the landings, my barrage, it's the Germans, allied movement uh, barrage combat, no exploitation here. So uh, the next turn will be more of the same, and we'll load that up in a little while. So far, my analysis, uh, I think he's doing fairly well here to have plugged that, knocked that hole in. So he's going to be able to start squeezing through already in two, and then when the tanks land, they're just going to shoot right through that hole. Over here, he's lucky, fortunate that he didn't have to run right into my wall of strong points. The allied landing is not bad. It actually, I'm not too happy about this. I would have rather they'd been scattered off in those directions. So I'm probably only going to be able to get to this area here. So we'll see how that goes. And off at the allied beaches, or the, the um, Commonwealth beaches, it's too bad he blew through me there. And yeah, I'm looking it over. I think the Allies looking fine. This unit, not sure what's going to happen to him on turn three when we start moving around. He's sort of isolated. We'll see if I can weasel out with that guy or not. And we'll see how far he gets ahead in this front, whether I can slow him down enough to bring up some reinforcements. So that's turn one overview of how the game goes. Hopefully you get a feel for yourselves, whether this is something you're interested in investing in or not.